Hello students, today we are going to see about the various frameworks that are involved in deep learning. So, uh, I begin with uh, the first uh, of a kind of tool that would help you to implement a deep learning algorithm which we call it as deep learning frameworks. So, the first of a kind of framework that I am going to talk about today is Theano. So, Theano is basically library which is based on Python and uh, it is basically used for low level of operations. It is going to support both CPU as well as GPU that means a uh, smaller scale of applications and um, low development efficiency and long model compilation times are the some of the drawbacks of Theano. So, that is first of the framework that we have discussed. The second I hope you are very much familiar on it. The second that we are going to discuss is scikit-learn which you have already I think used in your machine learning algorithms. So, Basically, scikit-learn is complete computing library which are useful for machine learning applications, machine learning algorithms and this scikit-learn has got rich amount of documentation with lots of examples to deal with. But you will not be uh, using it in neural network because it is not specifically designed for neural network. It is more oriented towards machine learning algorithm. There are lower amount of data sets and compilation time obviously will be very high if you use that in uh, neural network it won't provide you with better accuracy. So, also when you have got a humongous amount of data and you all know neural network will use GPUs for processing the same scikit learn will not be efficient because it does not support GPU acceleration. Implementation of neural network related layers is also lacking inside this particular library. Next that I am going to talk about is CAFE and this was introduced in the year 2013 by G.I. Yanking and it is useful for applications specifically using images that is in convolutional neural networks and it is not suitable for any other neural networks like recurrent neural networks or any other thing. It is mainly specifically used for CNNs and uh, the development language used in CAFE is C++ and it provides interfaces for other languages including Python. Now, this cafe also supports JPU and CPU unlike your scikit-learn and uh, but if I really want to talk about cafe now then the second version of cafe which was introduced is now merged in or integrated inside the library of PyTorch itself. So, we do not separately use cafe now. Next is Torch. So, very good scientific uh, computing based library is Torch and it is inspired, it is based on the language called Lua and it is highly flexible and uh, it is very easier to implement any customized layer using Torch and because Lua is not so popular and uh, number of users are low, Torch could not make it into its mainstream application, it remained unpopular somewhere. The next framework that we are talking about is MXNet and it was developed by Chen Tiaki and Limu. By the way, MXNet is the official deep learning framework which is used in Amazon and it has got a mixed method that is it not only uses imperative programming but also it uses symbolic programming. Symbolic programming I hope you are familiar with. Imperative programming is like where you impl implicitly uh, you know uh, code function in each and every step. So, it is a combination of better features of these two types of programming and thus it is very flexible and of obviously it is fast running speed also because where it use symbolic programming there you know uh, the speed will be faster and where it requires imperative programming there it uses imperative programming but in combination if you take it has got a very high speed and it is quite flexible in nature. It has got rich documentation with wide number of examples. The next that we are talking on PyTorch, it is very very famous these days and uh, 
uh, one of the very popular uh, deep learning framework which was launched by Facebook in the year of 2017. Uh, and uh, by the way, PyTorch is based upon the original Torch framework which we just discussed. And the main development language of this particular framework was Python and hence it was repay, uh, you know, renamed as PyTorch. This particularly, uh, this framework, this is going to use imperative programming only. It is very much popular in academics worldwide. Okay. It is very convenient to build any network model and it is also convenient to debug the networks using PyTorch. Uh, today, the cafe that we discussed which was originally useful for uh, convolutional neural network, cafe, second version and PyTorch, they are all merged together and which helped actually to overcome all the deficiencies of PyTorch, uh, you know, where PyTorch was lagging to, you know, although it was very po familiar and it was very much popular with academics, but it was lagging its identity in industries. But then when CAFE and PyTorch got merged, uh, it all removed all the deficiencies of PyTorch and it made its position, it started making its position in industry as well, industrial deployment as well. So PyTorch is very, very, very important uh, framework that you will be learning. The second one is TensorFlow, the uh, sorry, the next one is TensorFlow. TensorFlow is a part of your syllabus by the way. So TensorFlow was invent, uh, was released by Google in the year 2015 and initial versions of it supported only symbolic programming but later it has changed. In 2019 again the second version of uh, TensorFlow got officially released by Google which works on dynamic graph priority mode and it has overcome all the defects that it had in its first version. So the advantage with dynamic graph priority mode was to make efficient use of time to increase the speed uh, of execution. And uh, TensorFlow 2 has been widely used inside the industry and by the way TensorFlow is in much in detail for us in our syllabus, we have a separate sub chapter over TensorFlow that we are going to see. Okay. The next framework is Keras. Keras and TensorFlow go hand in hand by the way. Keras, Keras is an interface to TensorFlow library. Keras is a high level framework and it is implemented based on the underlying operations provided by frameworks like Theano and TensorFlow. And by the way, Keras is now uh, merged with TensorFlow, you know, you can use Keras along with TensorFlow and that we are going to see in our upcoming uh, chapters. Uh, large number of high level interfaces for rapid training and testing, it is being useful. Basically, Keras is a higher end API, you know. It is, you, it is very efficient for common applications and uh, if I talk about low level, low level implementation then operation efficiency is not that high and the flexibility is average but yes Keras and TensorFlow both are wonderful tools to deal with and we are going to use them in our uh, semester, this particular semester for our subject. Now if I want to compare uh, TensorFlow with PyTorch. You know, I, to, I talk these two are quite popular, TensorFlow is quite popular in the industry, PyTorch is quite popular with academic but then now PyTorch is also making its step into industry. So if I talk uh, TensorFlow versus PyTorch then at present they are the most widely used frameworks in the industry. TensorFlow has a complete solution and user base in the industry because it has got a flexible interface design, a highly streamlined interface design and that is why it is you know quite popular. Uh, the same goes with PyTorch and it, you can quickly build a network, you can quickly debug a network that is why it was very popular with academics and what are all shortcomings were there after the merger with CAFE it became quite popular in industry also. Second version of TensorFlow which was reintroduced in 2019 which overcame all the shortcomings of the first version, uh, it made it easier for the users to learn TensorFlow and to seamlessly deploy the models into the production. 
so when i talk on these two they both are quite popular frameworks when compared to all that you have seen and very popular in industry and uh, tensor flow is what we are going to learn in this particular semester now talking on tensor flow versus keras keras can be understood as a set of high level api design specifications both keras and tensor flow go hand in hand together here Keras, if I talk, is an official implementation of the specifications, like higher API specifications, like how how do I how do an API behave? How do an API link with another API? You know, all these specifications, Keras has got an implementation in it, and then the same specifications were also implemented in TensorFlow, and you can invoke it through TF dot Keras module. TF dot Keras will be used as a unique high level interface to avoid interface redundancy. You know, you are not calling uh, Keras separately, you are not calling TensorFlow separately, and you, you know, if whatever uh, uh, functions you want to invoke out of uh, Keras, which are a part of TensorFlow, then through TF dot Keras you will be able to use it to avoid any uh, redundancy in the app, uh, code. So this was about uh, all the frameworks, different types of frameworks that come into deep learning and uh, I hope you have understood them briefly. Out of all these, two of them which we have picked up for this semester is TensorFlow and Keras that you will be used, uh, seeing them as a part of subunits in the forthcoming units. In the first unit you will be learning about TensorFlow and then subsequently you will learn more about Keras and how these two work together to build better models in deep learning. Uh, you will be seeing some hands-on exercises as well. Thank you.